Thanks again, Tom, and thank you to the organizers for the very kind invitation. It's truly um, the, the once-in-a-lifetime exhibition is an overused uh, phrase, but I think in this case we can truly say that. It's a very beautiful and important show, so thank you. And um, thank you, Madrid, too, because I've experienced minus 40 Celsius many times in Canada, but rarely plus 40 Celsius, so thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Unraveling the work of Raffaellino del Colle relative to Raphael's workshop in Rome presents immediate difficulties, uh, not least because his friend and colleague Vasari elected not to write his biography. Nonetheless, Vasari is still our major published source for Raffaellino's life, and uh, references to the artist are scattered throughout the lives, various lives, published in the second edition of 1568. In the life of Giulio Romano in particular, Raffaellino is included among his most esteemed pupils. According to Giulio's will of April 1524, the student Raffaellino Garzone was to receive Giulio's artistic tools and equipment and a, myst and a mysterious black cloak as well, which we still don't quite know what that was. The marbles and antiquities, though, were not given to Raffaellino. Those were separated out, those valuables, just the artistic um, effects. Of Giulio's uh, Roman pupils, Raffaellino produced the most substantial body of independent work, which does suggest a higher degree of innate talent and responsibility uh, in the workshop. For example, Arnold Nesselrat's attribution of some drawings to another Giulio pupil, Giovanni Leone, uh, relate very slavishly to Giulio's Mantuan style and do not, I think, build confidence in Giovanni Leone's autonomous talent in the same way as Raffaellino. However, exactly when Raffaellino, uh, what Raffaellino did in Giulio's shop remains a matter of complete speculation Precisely why and when he even came to Rome is a mystery, and there's absolutely zero concrete evidence that Raffaellino came to Rome before Raphael's death in 1520. And attempts to place him, for example, among the artists in Raphael's loggia appear to be without any uh, documentary substance. At the risk of sounding overly pessimistic, until the Sala di Costantino in the Vatican is restored, Arnold, wherever you are, please, take another 30 years and do that. Um, uh, I, I fear that um, it's going to be impossible to make much progress on this issue of Raffaellino and those artists uh, after 1520 in relation to Giulio Romano. But nevertheless, let us explore Raffaellino's early career as thoroughly as possible to at least reach some potential consensus. His birth date is uncertain, um, but it was most likely around 1495, between 1494 and 19, uh, 1497. So if Giulio was born uh, around 1499, Raffaellino, in fact, would have been uh, older than Giulio, an observation that has not uh, really been stressed. I'm not quite sure what it means, but I just stress it. According to a credible 16th century source, Raffaellino uh, spent time as a student in the workshop of the Umbrian painter, Lo Spagna. And I show you a work by uh, Lo Spagna uh, from the later 1510s, a fresco in Trevi. And while this left no apparent direct trace on Raffaellino's style, it does suggest he learned to paint competently in fresco from a very early age and might have been, in a sense, what encouraged Giulio to bring uh, this young artist to Rome to assist in the Vatican stanze. This reference also uh, uh, suggests that Raffaellino traveled to Umbria and the Marche, where La Spagna was active in the 1510s and perhaps conditioned his own restless artistic temperament. Raffaellino's first documented commission is recorded in the archive of the Misericordia in San Sepulcro. According to this source, he was paid by the confraternity in installments between 11th April and 9th uh, September 1519 
for his part in the decoration of a wooden tabernacle, presumably a frame that is now destroyed, um, a frame that had already been constructed for a chapel in their church. Uh, I must admit, these documents have not been fully read. This archive is very difficult to access. And so when I say April to September 1519, I suggest I, I'm certain we're dealing with a broader period. Um, um, the nature of the commission, commission suggests that Raffalino was uh, executed in San Sepulcro itself. So in other words, since he was in San Sepulcro in 1519 for the better part and not in Rome. The first independent work by the artist to survive is the resurrection of Christ in the Cathedral of San Sepulcro. The sorry citation of a resurrection by Raffaellino in the chapel indicated by the document, um, it, we can be quite certain that the panel now hanging unframed in the left nave of the cathedral originally decorated it. According to the contract, the painting was ordered on 12th August 1522 by the authority of the absent Florentine bishop, Leonardo Tornabuoni. The, the picture formed part of a recently founded side chapel in the cathedral dedicated to the legendary founders of the city, the pilgrim saints Egidio and Arcano, who had stopped there with a relic of the Holy Sepulchre bought back from the Holy Land. Raffaellino was absent when the contract was drafted, and one assumes that he was in Rome. Progress on the decoration of the Sala di Costantino in the Vatican was halted partway through the completion um, during the short pontificate of Adrian VI, lasting from January 1522 until his death in September 1523. And it seems that this event forced Raffaellino back to his native San Sepulcro to seek major commissions. Work in the Vatican resumed after the election of Pope Clement VII on uh, 19th November 1523, and Raffaellino probably continued to assist Giulio until Giulio's departure from Mantua in the fall of 1524. In fact, there are documents in San Sepulchro that record his absence, for example, uh, tantalizingly, 12 November 1523, as if um, Raffaellino had already left San Sepulchro, anticipating the election of a new pope in Rome. So it appears quite certain that Raffaellino received this commission for the cathedral altarpiece while still resident in Rome. The possibility that he intended to execute the work in Rome and have it transported to, to San Sepulcro seems quite likely. And when we consider that the bishop, um, Ternaboni, who had ultimate responsibility for this commission, was also present in, in, in Rome and had not yet entered the diocese as of 1522, um, this comes even more likely, of course, the patron and the artist were in the same place uh, to discuss the commission. <clears throat> the assessment of our chapel is recorded in a document of 25th April, 1525, and the second document then over two and a half years after the contract indicates that Raffaellino had already completed the principal altarpiece, and we can be certain then that this resurrection painting was delivered by 1525. He was still obliged to paint a lunette, among other figures, and of those other paintings, only the lunette appears to survive in the cathedral, and to judge by its style, um, the lunette above was, seems very close in style, so presumably not painted long after spring 1525. As Raffaellino's first secure, surviving, major, documented work, it is from the resurrection that we must necessarily start to classify his style. The predilection for a dynamic movement, the swirling antique-inspired Alantica drapery, and um, the breadth of the nude parts, as in Christ's torso and left leg, um, can be seen then of, as early distinctive characteristics uh, of the artist. The glacial treatment of the lightning, uh, lighting was well suited to the dramatic depiction of the night scene. Raffaellino's painting demonstrates an undeniably technical, uh, undeniable technical ability, also evident in the convincing handling of the foreshortenings. Um, and these must have been among his main, main values then to Giulio in Rome. The work is otherwise fastidiously painted without any technical flourish. It is hard and smooth. 
While admiring his dexterity, it must be admitted that there is an overall lack of inventiveness as evidenced by his thorough reliance on previous models. It's a consistent fact that the painter's feeling for surface effect was always superior to his ability to conceive of new designs and poses, and that this painting has a composite uh, composition has long been recognized. I think I've got some, let's see here. Just, um, sorry, I hope you can fix the painting in your mind. Um, <clears throat> for example, the two soldiers on the left are copied from a group in Raphael's expulsion of Heliodorus. Raffaellino also knew drawings by Raphael uh, for his never executed resurrection altarpiece for the Chigi Chapel in Santa Maria della Pace. The guard at the lower left of the cathedral painting is derived from Raphael's black jock drawing in the Ashmolean uh, for a guard in the planned painting for Santa Maria della Pace. The soldier holding the shield uh, up to Christ is derived from another black jock drawing of two intermingled soldiers uh, by Raphael for the same project in Windsor. Maybe I'll just flip back so you see what I'm saying. Um, we do not have um, a precise source in a drawing for this figure, fleeing soldier, um, <clears throat> with his hands protecting his head, but it may well be that that records uh, a, another lost drawing by Raphael for a part of that uh, Santa Maria della Pace commission. So these derivations are proof of the knowledge of Raphael's earlier Roman drawings among assistants in Giulio's workshop. The sources Raphael mined, though, for his resurrection are not all appropriate to the subject. Uh, the figure of Christ, for example, was lifted with slight modifications um, from this painting of the Noli Mitangeri in the Prado, a work which has been linked with the project of Giulio's and Penny's for the Massimi Chapel in Santa Trinita dei Monti in Rome. Thus we find, as far as it can be traced, Raphael's style is based exclusively upon Raphael's drawing, Raffaellino's style is based exclusively upon Raphael's drawings, the frescoes in the Vatican Stanze, and Giulio's altarpieces. It's even possible that Giulio made a compositional drawing for Raffaellino's resurrection in order to assist his assistant. Given the emblematic uh, significance of this subject uh, for San Sepulcro, um, it's not surprising that Raffaellino produced replicas of this cathedral altarpiece for other local patrons. The most substantial example is this full-scale version made for a confraternity of San Crocifisso, uh, in which he repeated the figure of Christ and much of the setting. Um, um, while moving the sepulchre outside his tomb and recasting his soldiers into a different cast of characters. Uh, remarkably here, a compositional drawing uh, closely related to the second painting survives in the Louvre with a convincing attribution, in my opinion, to Giulio Romano. The sheet has been ascribed to Raffaellino del Colle several times, starting with Craig Hugh Smythe, but it's, it's a suggestion that has not always been accepted and uh, indeed does not convince me. It would appear that Raffaellino based his later design of the resurrection here on his own earlier version of the subject while borrowing uh, principally four soldiers from Giulio's uh, drawing, which again, he could have studied in Rome and perhaps uh, had retained a version or a copy of it. There's a third painting, in fact, a 17 description 17th century description of the Ducci collection in San Sepulcro records a small replica by Raffaellino of the cathedral version of his painting. It appears that this fragment, um, it's an untraced painting of a resurrection, which was sold at auction in Brussels about a century ago as a Michelangelo, uh, may well be that recorded painting. The dimensions are certainly suitable for a replica. The steps and the broken door of the tomb reproduce the Louvre drawing I just showed you. And to judge by the position of Christ's legs, Raffaellino again employed uh, the figure of Christ from the Louvre drawing. Uh, as, sorry, uh, he used the figure of Christ from the Louvre drawing as opposed to the Prado Noli Metangere. 
The soldiers have much uh, more in common with the cathedral version of the subject, and the soldier at the bottom uh, right records the original incarnation of the Heliodorus figure as a recumbent guard in front of Christ's tomb, as in Raphael's uh, Ashmolean drawing in black chalk. So you see he clearly knew that drawing as well. <coughs> In fact, um, this figure is a conflation of the two sketches on the same sheet, the pose taken from the main study, but the head is more precisely based on an isolated uh, head study at the upper right. So Raffaellino certainly knew this particular, um, particular drawing. Just jump ahead here. Um, so one may well wonder if Giulio provided access to Raffaellino, you know, some of the original drawings for Raphael's unexecuted project to use in composing his first re resurrection, which he then used even more directly later on to produce um, other paintings, including this small-scale replica of the subject, which of course happens to be closer in scale to the drawings. To continue, uh, Raffaellino also possessed the original or a copy after a drawing related to Giulio's style in the Morgan Library, which provided him with the main ideas for a lunette, which is now famously located, I'll go back, um, above uh, Rosso Fiorentino's altarpiece of 1527 28 um, in the church uh, of Santa Croce and San Sepulcro. Um, Silvia Farino Pagden's suggestion that the Morgan drawing, which she attributed to Penny with a question mark, uh, relates to the decoration of the Massimi Chapel in Santa Trinita dei Monti in Rome is compelling in light of Raffaellino's literal use of the Noli Metangere altarpiece uh, from that, apparently from that chapel for his resurrection designs. The, the presence of a tomb, you notice the presen presence of a tomb at the bottom of this drawing um, is important because it doesn't relate to the subject matter of Rosso's altarpiece, which is not a resurrection. Um, and so it must have been made for a different purpose, the drawing presumably to surmount a resurrection. To my eye, the lively, spry quality of the Morgan drawing would, would seem of sufficient quality to merit an attribution to Giulio himself. And, um, I could go on and on with these kinds of comparisons, but I think the crux of what I'm saying, as you can see, revolves around attributions to Giulio and Raffaellino um, and in terms of quality. And it also includes uh, paintings. Uh, emblematic of this um, debate would be, I think for me, this Virgin and Child painting uh, with John the Baptist in the Walters Art Gallery in Baltimore, which continues to fluctuate in terms of attribution, but it seems to me um, unquestionably a work of Giulio Romano entirely, given its high level of quality, level of invention, pentimenti, and so on. This method of composing, as evidenced in Raffaellino's paintings of the resurrection in San Sepulcro, was not only confined to that series of works. Indeed, throughout his career, he continued to use the comprehensive material that he had preserved from his Ro Roman uh, apprenticeship in Giulio Romano's workshop. The most substantial documented uh, spoil was Giulio's autograph cartoon for the Santa Maria dell'Anima altarpiece, a panel on which Raffaellino presumably assisted, and the influence of that work can be traced in innumerable paintings uh, by him, but, oops, sorry. Mercifully, I'll jump to the very end of his life. And uh, this is the Santa Maria delle Grazie altarpiece by Raffaellino, among the last examples of this lifelong trend of plagiarizing uh, Giulio. A small altarpiece remains in situ, dating by documents to the mid-1550s. The emphatic equilibrium, the attenuated, attenuated um, and weightless body type as well as Raffaellino's distinctive spidery grace um, is found in, in really all the works of his career. The lower half of the kneeling virgin retains the memory of that venerable Giulio prototype, um, the dying saint in the stoning of St. Stephen, the altarpiece sent to Genoa. 
transposed to Raffaellino's canon, the figure is more upright, less flexible, expressively blander, a competent but slavish transcription as opposed to an inspired reworking until the very end of his life. To conclude, Raffaellino was the principal painter in San Sepulcro throughout his long career until his death in 1566. His own workshop was a locus for the training of um, any aspiring painters in the town. And I mention Giovanni Paolo del Colle, who graduated to become one of Vasari's um, main, most valued assistants in Rome. Thus, by this means, Raphael's style, in a sense, comes full circle and continues to leave a trace in Rome, but just a trace. That many of Raffaellino's pictorial solutions, just derived as they were from Raphael and Giulio, had met with the approval from Roman patrons, as distinguished as the Pope himself, must have raised the painter in the eyes of potential patrons in his native town and contrib contributed to his local dominance. Yet the consistency of Raffaellino's style doubtless continued to his success too, and the continuing production of a familiar style, so anathema to our appreciation of artistic endeavor, clearly had considerable virtue in this period, I say in regional towns, but I wonder even in Rome itself as we go through this exhibition and think about stylistic development, is that our own model, not of the period? This observation about Raffaellino casts light on the almost frustratingly uh, stylistic consistency of San Sepolcro's perhaps more famous son, Piero della Francesca. And I'll stop there. Thank you very much. <laughs>